Today on the channel, it's the return of the Kyle Peterson Top 5 with something entirely different, as today I'm counting down my Top 5 Metallica albums of all time. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another edition of the Kyle Peterson Top 5, a Thursday tradition here on the channel, where every single Thursday I'm counting down my top 5 or top 10 of something, and today we're doing something entirely different. We've went off the rails here, as every single top 5 list, top 10 list we've done here on the channel has been action figure related, but I decided in honor of the brand new Metallica album, 72 Seasons, I said, you know what, we're going to do a Metallica top five. I'm going to count down my top five Metallica albums of all time. I think most people that watch this channel for quite some time know I am a big metal head. I'm a big music fan. A lot of people kind of pigeonhole me into a metal fan, but I love my outlaw country. I love my old school country music. I love the Beatles, George Harrison, Eric Clapton, a lot of the 60s, 70s rock bands, the kisses of the world, things like that. So I'm a pretty big uh, fan of music in general. I have a massive collection of music in my life. Uh, I've since sold majority of that. Uh, it's a whole other story, but I am a big, big music fan ever since I was a little kid, and I'm a person that likes to check out the entire discography of a band, artist, whatever. Willie Nelson, he's got like 147 albums. Guess what? I've heard every single one of them, and a lot of people give me a lot of grief about, you've never seen this movie, you've never seen that movie. Well, I've listened to everything Eric Clapton's ever did. I've ever listened to everything The Who and Solo related, The Monkees, Mike Nesmith Solo related. Beatles, all their soul albums, all that kind of stuff, and about every single heavy metal band that's known to man, I've listened to pretty much their entire catalog. So while you were watching movies on the couch, I was sitting there with the headphones on, uh, you know, working out, at work, uh, doing something, listening to music, or just sitting in my room listening. So I've listened to a lot of music, I've been around a lot of music, I've seen a million concerts in my life, uh, but Metallica, of course, one of my all-time favorite bands. I would never say they're the greatest metal band of all time, and you can make the argument they're no longer Longer, really traditional truly metal band they've really crossed over that pattern into hard rock where they're right up there with the names of like the Rolling Stones and things like that obviously the biggest metal band of all time is Metallica let's be honest here Black Sabbath Priest, Maiden, they're all huge too, but Metallica crosses over to so many different people. You got old people, you got little kids, a lot of people live listen to Metallica on a regular basis. And really Metallica's styles and store of course have changed over the years. You go to Kill 'em All to 72 Seasons. Yeah, there's similarities, but man, they are quite different. And I really always akin kind of Metallica to the Beatles. I'm a big Beatles guy as well. And Metallica is a lot like the Beatles. So the Beatles started off with, you know, the lovey dovey stuff. Uh, the softer stuff, things like that. We all know the early Beatles stuff. That's kind of Metallica in their hardcore, you know, thrash metal days, the beginning, the first three, four albums, three albums, let's call it. Uh, that's kind of Metallica's uh, Please Please Me phase. And then, you know, Metallica changed their sound with the Black Album, uh, Load, Reload, Lulu. Maybe that'll be on the list. Uh, spoiler alert, probably not. But they changed their sound much like the Beatles did with Rubber Soul, Sgt. Pepper, The White Album, Abbey Road, Let It Be, and so forth. So there's some analogies you can grow between the two bands there. But Metallica, one of those bands that I will always listen to their new album. I will always listen to it on first uh, day it's released. I'll always be anticipating it, always be excited for it. And if they come to my town, guess what? I'm going to go to the Metallica show uh, just because I do enjoy Metallica. I know a lot of people have jumped off the ship over the years. Uh, more people have jumped on. It's just kind of the way it goes with some of these bigger bands, of course. I will say 72 seasons. I've listened to it twice through so far. I haven't made a final verdict judgment on it yet. It is not going to be in my top five. I think it's just impossible to be in my top five. I don't know. Maybe a year from now I do it over. Maybe it'll slip in at number five. I don't think so. But it's worth the listen for sure. My thing with Metallica these days is Metallica has gotten so big. And Metallica has done a great job of, of managing their business. What is it? Q Prime Management, I think. Uh, that's who they were represented by, who they work with for a long, long time. They've got things down to a science. But I truly think Metallica doesn't have somebody kind of tapping them on the shoulder saying, you ought to try to do this. Maybe this isn't as good. Because there is some hits and misses like most bands do have. But there's been a few things lately where I think songs have went on way too long. I'm a heavy metal guy that likes a fast in and out song, a punk rock song. Uh, long opuses very rarely work for me. That's my opinion. And I think Metallica over the last few albums have had a few songs where if they tightened them up a little bit 
or you talk about the album Hardwired. I enjoyed a lot on Hardwired, but I think they could have uh, meandered it down to maybe one album and maybe save some of those for a one-off single, maybe an EP, something like that. But I would have liked to seen a more tight, concise album. And some of these songs are so long, it just doesn't feel right. It feels like they could shave a minute or two off and have just the same effect. Maybe that's just me, but that's my impression at uh, 72 Seasons at first. Just seems a little bit long, but there is some really good songs. As of right now, I've only listened to it twice. Uh, I don't have the song title memorized it kind of does run together a little bit for me but it is enjoyable listen i'm always excited when any band that i've been following for many many years has new material out it's always an interesting time there but metallica highs and lows and i gotta say is honestly more highs than lows yes you got some dog albums out there you got some that missed the mark but you got a lot of content a lot of dvds a lot of live shows a lot of live cds a lot of different stuff from Metallica over the years. So really, one of the great outputs of uh, any kind of heavy metal band or music band over the last, you know, however many years it's been since they've came here. And of course, we're going to do this like we do the other top fives on the channel. We're going to start at number five, work our way to number one. This is, of course, going to be my list. Going to ask you guys for your list. And once again, nobody really can be wrong on something like this because uh, it's your opinion. So there, without further ado, let's kick it off and let's start it off at number five. All right, we start off the Metallica top five list, and at number five for me, probably a little controversial. We'll see what you guys think, but I'm going at number five. I'm going Death Magnetic, uh, one of the more recent Metallica albums. I think it's even 10 years old at this point. I can't believe how fast time is going. I think a lot of us are in that boat, uh, but Death Magnetic came out, and there was some people. I was not one of these. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit, I don't have a supersonic ear for like clarity and stuff, and you hear people that want the high-definition stereo systems and stuff. It's just, I've never been that guy that could really, I mean, you can tell a difference a lot of times, but not enough of a difference to make it worth it. I don't know if that makes sense, but Death Magnetic, a lot of people were down on it because they didn't like the sound of the album. It is a little bit muddy, I get it, but I do like the sound of the album as a whole. Maybe I'm just an anomaly out there, not exactly sure, but I really did like it, and it felt like a little bit of a return to form for Metallica as it was a heavy, hard-hitting album, at least from where I'm sitting, of course, right here at this table. But I really did enjoy it, and a couple standout tracks on that album, All Nightmare Long, Broken, Beaten, and Scarred's another great one. Cyanide, I enjoyed. There's a few good songs on this album. More than a few, honestly. And I really do like it. It felt like a return to form for me for Metallica. Uh, I don't know. You guys tell me. But number five for me, it's going to be Death Magnetic. Number four in my top five Metallica countdown comes to Ride the Lightning. Ride the Lightning, the second Metallica album I ever heard in my life. And man, it blew me away. Songs like, of course, Creeping Death, Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls, all-time Metallica classics out there. And one thing about it, if I had to do top five cover arts for Metallica, Ride the Lightning might be number one for me. Still had that aggressive early Metallica sound that I just cherish so much. Absolutely love this one. Uh, I remember hearing Injustice for All, then going back to hearing Ride the Lightning, and Ride the Lightning just blew me away. I was like, man, this is so cool. This is so uh, fast and heavy. As we all know, you know, Metallica started with Kill 'Em All. They went Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, then, of course, Injustice for All. And a lot of the early ones had a lot of similarities, but a little bit of differences every single time. And I think we could all say Injustice for All is a lot, uh, is a bigger step between albums than, let's say, uh, Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning was but ride the lightning still holds a special place just staring at that album cover and then hearing the song ride the lightning about somebody in an electric chair i just thought it was the coolest thing when i was a little kid who are we fooling it's a cool thing right now so coming in at number four for me we're gonna ride the lightning we've come to the number three spot the middle of the road in our metallica countdown do you got your list together make sure you put it in the comments down below but number three is where i was introduced to metallica i was a very small child oh just a little guy in elementary school and i was hitting up my local music land if you guys remember those on a regular basis and of course i was watching mtv all the time and headbangers ball was a game changer for young kyle loved watching headbangers ball every single saturday night that's how i found so many bands i still love to this day it was a saturday ritual trying to stay up on saturday night's main event Head bangers ball it was a it was a test because i was always an early uh, sleeper and i'd have to stay up as late as i could to watch it i'd fall asleep a lot during the middle of headbangers ball and saturday night's main event when i was a little kid too 
But Injustice for All is where I came into Metallica. That is where I first heard the words Metallica. That's where I first heard their music. And I'm guessing there's probably a whole generation where they saw Metallica's first music video they ever did. Of course, the song was one. Still an all-time Metallica great song. And then the Johnny Got It's Gun footage. I thought it was just music video footage when I was a kid. Until many years later, you realize that was a movie back in the day. But quite the story there with Metallica putting the soundtrack to it. One is an all-time classic classic that breakdown when they really hammer into it it was like nothing i'd ever heard before just absolutely awesome i still remember sitting in my elementary school class talking to my friends about it you know because metallica was all all over mtv at the time with one it was starting to get play outside of headbangers ball and we do know Injustice for All really carried them into the Black Album where things just exploded and uh, took a turn for the worse, if you ask me. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, songs like Freight Ends of Sanity, One, Harvester of Sorrow, Blackened. I mean, so many good songs in Injustice for All. I know some people do dog it for the lack of bass. Uh, and especially when I was a kid, I really didn't even notice the lack of bass. But man, it still holds up to me. It's still an all-timer. Jason Newstead, of course, replacing Cliff Burton. Jason Newstead was great. I love of Jason Newstead, probably because I came into it with Jason Newstead, and I really did follow Jason Newstead. He has a couple of solo albums that are amazing, very Motorhead style, so you know I'm eating that up with a fork and a spoon, and sometimes a spork as well. I uh, really do enjoy uh, Jason Newstead's uh, solo stuff, but I also really do love, of course, Injustice for All, and so much so, it comes in at number three in my top five Metallica albums. Dangerously close to the number one spot. We're at the number two in my Metallica countdown. And I've got to imagine a lot of people are going to have this one. I think everybody will probably have this one on their list somewhere or another. And what are we talking about? We're talking about Master of Puppets. A lot of people say it is their best album after all these years. Uh, for a long time, the Black Album seemed to be everybody's favorite Metallica album. But I think in the last 10 years or so, it really feels like Masters of Puppets is getting its flowers. A lot of people kind of dismissed it. It's too heavy. That early Metallica, too heavy too heavy well as to the guard has changed and times have changed a lot of people have came around to master of puppets and of course master of puppets the song we've seen it in tons of movies we've seen it all over the place commercials things like that it, it was a hardcore heavy metal song back in the day now it's just kind of a, a song you would hear in a commercial for a credit card company or something like that so it's amazing the dynamic changes there of course album cover is amazing this was the third metallic album i ever did listen to or own of course i started with the injustice for all went and got right the lightning for whatever reason then i got master of puppets but a lot of great songs on there of course like i said master of puppets sanitarium uh battery so many good songs so many classics that they still play live to this day that's one great thing about metallica in their live shows there's something to be said about a band that changes their set list every single night those are the true great live performance bands where you never know what you're going to expect i love iron maiden iron maiden is one of my all-time favorite bands they have such a big stage setup they have to play the same set list every single night it is what it is but there's something about real true heavy metal metal where you never know what you're going to play. You might play a cover, you might play a deep cut, you might play the hits, you just never know what you might get. And that's one of the fun things about the Metallica shows is they rotate that set list around really, really good. And they pull out a lot of the classics. They don't just play the modern stuff and the thing people want them to hear or play. Uh, they play some of the classics here and they even play some of the old school covers from like the garage days and things like that. So Metallica playing all the hits in more ways than one and coming in at number two for me, Master of Puppets, what is number one? Well, stay tuned. <clears throat> Here we are, we're at the number one Metallica album of all time as voted by me. Make sure you get your list in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'm not saying we're going to turn these uh, top fives into all music ones, but we might pepper in one a couple of times a year. I figured Metallica with 72 seasons coming out, it was a good time. I would love to do a top five Motorhead one day. Probably Judas Priest, probably Iron Maiden. Uh, there's so many bands I could do a top five for. Maybe I'll start a separate channel of the top five. So I don't know, probably not, but there's a lot of bands. I would love to do and love to talk about and stuff like that. And I think it's a fun little change of pace, a little breather room here uh, in this video of something different than action figures, but pretty fun here to do. But number one for me, let's dive into it. What is the number one metallic album of all time? Well, a lot of people would probably say Black Album. Not me. Didn't even make my top five. Sorry about that. Because the Black Album, when that came out, it broke little Kyle's heart. I think I was in fifth grade at the time. And I remember Enter Sandman. And I'm just going to talk about Black Album a little bit here. Uh, but Enter 
Sure, Sammy came out and it was all in. I was like, this is my song. I can't believe how good this is. I love Enter Sandman to this day. Of course, the Sandman from ECW taking it as his theme song made it that much better for me. So I always loved Enter Sandman. But then I heard the rest of the Black Album and I was like, this isn't my Black Album. As by this point, I had went back and I have, of course, heard Injustice for All, Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning. And I also heard the number one album on my list, it is Kill 'Em All, and Kill 'Em All is my favorite Metallica album of all time. Just the early aggression, the new wave of British heavy metal, thrash metal style. Dave Mustaine, of course, Dave Mustaine of Megadeth, another favorite band of mine, infusing his songwriting, some of his guitar playing. Uh, it really is kind of Metallica and Dave Mustaine album in tons of ways, of course. So there's just a lot for me to like, and I remember hearing it after, of course, hearing Master, Ride the Lightning, and Justice for All, and there was something like a breath of fresh air, like the the heavens opened up for me when I heard Kill Em All for, as the first time, and then I started checking out a lot of bands from the new wave of British heavy metal scene, and some other faster, harder bands, uh, the Venoms of the world around then, and it was just something that just blew my mind and still to this day I'm always still kind of trying to find that first high of hearing Kill Em All. It was just so great. Songs like No Remorse, Whiplash, Metal Militia, and possibly my favorite Metallica song of all time, which strangely enough, Sting, of course, in WCW, took as his theme song. We're talking Seek and Destroy. Just so much great stuff on Kill Em All. I feel a lot of people kind of dismiss it. They like it, but they always go to the Black Album. They go to the Masters, the Ride the Lightnings, even the Injustice for Alls. But not me. Kill Em All will still hold tight. Hold tight for me as my number one Metallica album. Just, I love the raw early aggression. The early stages of Metallica was just something really special. Not that it's not special now. They've had tons of albums. Of course, there's the reloads and the loads, which I honestly did not mind. Uh, I actually kind of liked those albums when they came out, and I don't mind them now. They're not all hits, but uh, a moment in time of Metallica is what that felt like, and it felt like it resonated with me at the time. I wouldn't say they're top five worthy, but they'd maybe, maybe be on the back end of the top 10 possibly uh you have hot garbage like lulu with lou reed i don't understand that at all i know they try to defend it and stuff it's just lou reed i don't resonate with and metallica and lou reed i did not resonate with and then saint anger i remember when saint anger came out there was such high hopes for that one and i remember my buddy was into metallica at the time and i remember going to work and, okay what do you think and he's like it's amazing and i was just like get out of here this it's horrible i did not like saint anger at all and I think that one has not aged well at all either for them. So uh, they've had some tough ones. Hardwired to Self-Destruct, I enjoyed that album. I think it could have been cut down a little bit, but it is what it is. I even enjoyed uh, the s &M albums, the live shows. Uh, you had the Injustice for All tour box set that was really good. Metallica always puts on a great live show. Uh, so there's a lot of good Metallica throughout the years. But for me, like I said, I'm going to finish it here with Kill Em All as my number one Metallica album of all time. Quite the, uh, quite the discography for Metallica. Hopefully more good stuff to come. Hopefully more spins of 72 seasons, and we'll see where that ends up on my top list there. I just don't think it's ever going to crack the top five. I think my top five is pretty much set for life for me, but you never know. I'm all for it. But let me know in the comments down below, what is your Metallica top five? Let me know, and make sure you do put them in order. That is the hard part. That is the fun part, though, as I always do say. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. Don't forget about the Patreon for early access to videos like this, bonus content, exclusive content, Q&A, you name it. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. And then don't forget to hit me up and follow along over on social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for a Metallica Top 5, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.